And uh, from that small tent with a few of us to a church of 3,000 people, we have reason to celebrate. It is not celebration in vain. It is a real celebration. We have seen God's blessing, God's providence, God's faithfulness. And that is why today, Milimani, from a church in a tent, we now have this magnificent building from a few people, less than 10 families, to 3,000 people. We want to thank God for Milimani and to thank God for AIC. As a member of this church, you have donated me to do, I am elder in many churches now in Kenya. I am a member of many churches, from the Acorino <laughs> all the way to many other denominations. And I have seen God's hand as we serve him, especially in making sure that we have a firm foundation for our nation rooted in the fear of God and the belief in God. Many nations go astray. We must thank God for Kenya. We have a special country. We have a blessed nation. A nation that believes in God, that is unashamed about Christ. And the more I see what's, what God is doing in Kenya, the more I am persuaded that Kenya is a truly blessed nation. And as you have seen Milimani grow, so has our country grown. We have seen God's blessings all the time in making our country better, making our country safer, making our country truly blessed. And I am very happy that from the humble beginnings of our nation, today we have a nation that stands out globally a nation that many nations look up to for leadership, for support. Sometimes we underestimate what Kenya is. Kenya is a great nation and we should be proud of this nation that God has given to us. Just two days ago, the Prime Minister of Haiti was here with gratitude for what our policemen are doing thousands of kilometers away from Kenya. The United Nations, a, country, a, a, a union or a, a, a a coming together of close to 200 nations in the world identified Kenya as the nation that would lead the multinational support mission in Haiti because of our history, because of what the world thinks of us. And so we have grown as a nation the same way Milimani has grown from very humble beginnings to what we see today. And we must always thank God for what he is doing for us in church, 
in our lives and in our nation. I must thank those who came before us. Um, when it was said here among the elders of this church, I was among the very junior elders. Uh, because then I was newly married, and so I, I had to learn a few things from General Sumbeiwa and all the others. Um, I'm very happy that today, even if uh, General Sumbeiwa, you saw the way he began the chorus. Uh, <laughs> that I didn't have to help him. There are many, many wonderful singers in this church today. We thank God for you. A beautiful choir that has sung here, two of them, uh, is truly a blessing from where we were. So when um, the senior pastor told me that there had been sent an invitation for this celebration, I told him I'm going to struggle because it wasn't in my diary. My diary was committed somewhere else. I've had to negotiate with people in other places because I didn't want to miss this celebration. Because there is truly something to celebrate about Melimani. Because I have personal experience of the humble beginnings of this church and looking at it today the way it is, it's awesome. It's a true blessing and I wanted to be part of this great moment celebrating 30 years of God's faithfulness in Milimani Church. I have done many things for many other churches and uh, I had been asked to come here during the 25th anniversary. I couldn't make it. There was no way I was going to miss this one of 30th celebration. So I am very happy to be part of this great celebration as we thank God for Melimani. Let me also um, say that uh, to the Africa Inland Church, which is my home church, you have our support as the leadership of the church, as you do what you must in the field of missions, in supporting our schools, in supporting the hospitals that you run. I want to commit to you that the government of Kenya under my leadership is going to work with you as we work with all other faith-based organizations that are supporting <laughs> that are supporting our education, that are supporting our health sector, and to specifically say that, um, to congratulate the faith-based organizations, even as we roll out our universal health coverage program. I want to thank faith-based institutions that run hospitals in Kenya for stepping forward and partnering with us. Today, we have registered close to 12.8 million people under the new UHC program because it is our intention to make sure that no Kenyan is left behind on matters health. For the first time, every Kenyan will have a health insurance for the first time. And it is because that's what the Bible says, that's what the Bible teaches, that we lift those at the bottom. It is the reason why our housing program, I'm very proud of what Mukuru is looking like. I'm very happy with what Kibra is looking like. Informal settlements, places where there, were, there are no toilets, there is no water, there is no road. Today, if you go to Mukuru, 
the 14,000 houses we are building, where somebody living in Mukuru for the first time can now not rent, but own a house by paying 3,000 shillings. That's, that's my mission, to make sure that we create a nation of equals, a nation that evens us and makes us truly Kenyan together, making sure that we move together as a nation. And that is why, uh, Bishop, when you read the words in Luke 9.62, and Jesus says, no one who puts his hands on the plow and looks back is worth the kingdom of God. We must not look, we must not look back and I will not look back in making sure that I oversee the transformation of Kenya. I ask for your support. I ask for your prayer. Implementing some of the transformational changes to change our nation requires prayers, requires commitment. But I want to promise you that this nation, the nation we love, this country, the country of Kenya, by God's grace, we're going to change it. I am very confident we're going to change this nation. And I want to thank you for what you're doing in church. I want to ask you in the service of God as Christians, do not look back. Let us do the missions that we have planned to do, build the sanctuaries that we have planned to do, and whatever it is that you require from those of us in government, we will be there to support you and to support uh, God's work. As I said last week, God's work in Kenya will proceed unhindered by whatever means. We will make sure that because we are unapologetic about our faith, we are committed to making sure that Kenya moves forward and a nation that believes in God because our constitution says with clarity, God of all creation. That is who we believe in. So we will continue to be a God-fearing nation. And I want to say thank you very much, uh, Church, for what you're doing, uh, for supporting our schools, for supporting um, our hospitals, for uh, supporting the development of our country. I want to say to all religious institutions, all churches across Kenya, we appreciate your support. We want to make sure that no citizen is left behind, whether in schools, in hospitals, and everything else that we are doing to create opportunities for our young people to work. This city of Nairobi is a great city, and we are happy to be living in this capital of Kenya. As you know, from the first of uh, this month, we rolled out our program that now has 10,000 young people working. I want to promise you that uh, the river you have in Nairobi, in two years' time, you will have a different river in Nairobi. Because we cannot have the headquarters of World Environment, UNEP, in Nairobi and have the dirty river that we have. It is an indictment on us. And so uh, I intend
to work with all the stakeholders to make sure that we straighten things there and make sure that we live in a city that befits to be the environmental headquarters of the world. So to all of us, um, I will be meeting also the leadership of Nairobi shortly because there are close to 10,000 children who are not going to school in Nairobi. And that is very serious. So I will be meeting the members of parliament. We have already provided resources because we want to build an extra 5,000 classrooms in Nairobi to make sure that all our children, especially those who live in informal settlements, go to school. Because that's what we must do as we serve humanity, 